you're all getting the annoying prompt, I assume, or you're not? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the July 6th uh, Chaos Community Meeting. This is the first community meeting of the month. So it's a little bit different than our usual um, flow. Um, my, I'm Elizabeth, I'm the community manager. I'm really happy to see everyone here. Thank you for joining us and um, we'll jump right into it because we have a lot to talk about and we are gonna try to end the meeting a little bit earlier than uh, the, the allotted time so that the Chaos Con Planning Committee can go ahead and um, talk about a few things we need to wrap up. So that being said, if you could please um, record your name in the uh, meeting minutes, which we'll post one more time, um, that would be great. And if you want to tell us one thing, one good thing going on in your life recently, that would be amazing because we would love to know about that. So um, go ahead and drop that in if you feel like you want to do that. Um, okay, let's start. So the first one on the agenda is um, just some quick updates from our working groups. That's usually what we do in these monthly meetings. Um, the first one is from our Asia Pacific community. Um, they are just doing some amazing things uh, over there. We're so happy that they're part of us. Um, and so we wanted to share uh, some things that they're working on. The first one is this um, idea of metric models, um, which we've linked to in the, um, in the agenda, but we can also uh, drop it here in the meeting or in the chat or Zoom. Um, it's just some a way to kind of visualize and and put together some metrics that make sense it, together in a certain way. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit in the past of how to kind of combine metrics that make sense together. Um, so I don't know if someone who is from that community wants to talk a little bit about that. I don't see any of the people who worked on this directly on the call right now because they're like it's like midnight their time. So I'm not surprised they're not here for things. Um, but uh, we did want to share this with you all and get your feedback. And um, so you might want to just take a look at that um, in your in your free time. Does anybody have anything to add to that, Matt or Sean or anyone who else was in that meeting? Don, anybody? I would just say that what you're seeing when you look at the boxes are collections of metrics that have been analyzed as likely to go together or want people want to look at them together. That That is the fundamental principle of these um, metric models. That's what they're trying to do. That's the goal. So we um, we had a, it was a great discussion around this. So I really appreciate all the work that was put into this. Um, one of the questions that I have is you know, what, what we can do with this. So do we like just put it as a PDF on the website? Do we, is there anything that we could do filtering wise on the metrics page? I mean, it doesn't have to happen today, but I'm kind of thinking, Kevin, looking at you, like as we move to the new WordPress site, in time, like, is there a way for us on the metrics page to present this to people? Uh, yes. So we've been, we've in the in the past, and and this is something that's kind of ongoing. We've we've built some kind of prototype filtering and navigation methods. Uh, so we've started working on this, and actually one of the uh, one of the Google Summer Summer of Code projects that we had put in for was to actually do this very specifically. Uh, however, we uh, we didn't end up getting the, the students for that one. Uh, so, but it is it is an ongoing, uh, uh, I suppose, uh, project or something that we're working on. This, this way of uh, categorizing, sorting, and, and filtering metrics on the website. Uh, and maybe that's, uh, maybe that involves creating a, uh, a database or, or Maybe a, a, a JSON file where we can where we can uh, sort these metrics with with different tags and characteristics, uh, and uh, uh, and then display them in uh, interesting ways. Okay, cool. Um, but yes, yeah, some something we are we are thinking about and working on. So. Okay, because uh, that'd be great. Because as as we get like the over 60 metrics, I think we might want to be like more 
deliberate in the end of 2021. It's 2021, right? In the start of 2022. <laughs> so like, to, to think about how we can present these filtered views of metrics. Uh, scale, scale and scope of our metrics releases uh, is is becoming is rapidly becoming a concern. Uh, so right now it's it's very easy to deal with the the fifty or so metrics that we have. Uh, however, yeah, as we as we move up into the hundred, you know, two hundred metrics, uh, lists of metrics aren't going to be terribly useful. Uh, we we need to figure out a way to sort them. So it is definitely a concern, and I welcome. I welcome all input on it, and I uh, one of the one of the the key issues that we had when we started thinking about this was actually the ways that we would categorize these to begin with. So this work from the Asia Pacific uh, uh, communities is really important and uh, and very interesting. So yeah, thank you to them. Yeah, one thank of you. the options we have discussed previously also is like scenario based metrics. Once we have two hundred or three hundred metrics. If we have a certain scenario uh, used by different project managers or community users, we can pick certain metrics for them and like guide them as a as a bunch of metrics used in the particular scenario. Yeah, certainly use use cases and scenario scenario uh, metrics for sure. I, I think if anyone. One way we might get feedback is to open an issue. I don't know on which repository with this and ask, you know, explain its purpose and ask people what chaos metrics do you combine together when you produce a report inside, you know, your organization? Like, which are the, and it might take a little doing to actually figure out which chaos metrics are in a particular report, but. And, and we'll do some testing of interfaces with Augur that combine these sets. But I think I think there's a lot of people here already using combinations of chaos metrics. It would be great to get some of that insight. Because I'm sure not every I'm not sure it's not I'm, not, I'm sure this isn't like instantly universal and exactly perfect, right? It would be great to get other examples. In the uh, in the future, we might be able since we're not really I think the work on the, the community reports has kind of uh, tailored off a little bit. Uh, we could modify that community reports form to capture that information that you were just talking about mm -hmm. uh, to help uh, to help kind of figure out how to, how people would would want to view metrics together or how they would categorize them. So uh, that that form already exists and the uh, or our ability to handle that information is already set. So we, we could look at that. Okay. So should we bring this back to the Asia Pacific community and ask them to open the repo? Or um, I know not, not all of them have access to GitHub, but a few of them do. So is that what you're suggesting, Sean, is like a next step for yeah. this? Yeah, I was suggesting possibly an issue that, that would go, but I don't know what repo. So if we create a repo for like metric combinations or something, uh, then we put the issue in there or we could just put it in the metrics repo. If, we, uh, hmm. if we're viewing this issue as an issue of uh, uh, idea how, generation, how we, want to, how we want to display the metrics and the categorization, uh, then we could we could connect it to the issue that we already have in the website repo about that. So mm -hmm. the website might actually be a good place to handle that. Okay. Uh, but uh, rather than an individual working group, and I think I believe the the metrics repository is in the process of getting retired. Uh, okay. The only the only thing that's there is the metrics template, and I believe there was. Uh, a discussion about moving the metrics template into the governance repo. Sure, that makes sense. Oh. I just I can't get past the chaos project not having a metrics repository. <laughs> I know it's a little, uh, it's a little confusing, isn't it? But... <laughs> 
Okay, so let's continue this discussion back at uh, that community. Um, and in the meantime, um, if people do want to take a look at that doc and maybe jot down some thoughts until we let you know where to put them, <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be great. Any final comments? Because we probably should move along because we have a lot. So, okay. Um, so the next one, we just want to let you know um, in case you missed it, that um, the Chinese community is hosting a Beijing meetup. So if you have colleagues over in China and Beijing and you think that this is something they might be interested in or friends, um, please feel free to pass along the registration link, which is in the agenda uh, slash meeting minutes. Um, there's a copy of the schedule as well. And you can see it looks like it's gonna be really awesome. We're just so proud of that community and all the work that they're doing. They're just taking the ball and running with it. It's, it's fantastic work. So um, definitely pass that along if you, if you know someone who might be interested in participating. Um, the next working group we're going to talk about is the DEI working group. Uh, we are working on a few metrics. We've released a few, but um, I think you all know about that from last meeting. So um, anybody want to quickly touch on those three metrics, I think, that we're working on? Anyone from that group? Global time inclusion is going to be worked on most likely in the next meeting for DEI. And then we're going to keep working on more of DEI metrics as we go. Um, and also psychological safety, we're working on that as well. So um, questions about the DEI group? Anything to add that we've left out? I thought we might want to, on Twitter, like re-promote the fact that events can go through the badging program. I think there's one open right now. Is that right, Matt? Correct. I am making a note on my little list that says stuff I need to do. So I will do that, Matt. Okay. Anything else from the DEI group that we want to mention? Okay, let's move on. Uh, value working group, we've released a couple of new metrics. Vinod, do you want to talk about that? Yes. So we have uh, finalized two metrics. One is organizational influence and other is uh, academic open source project impact. Uh, I guess one is uh, under the review on the GitHub. Other is I've created a pull request that needs to be accepted. Then it'll be for the review. These are the two which we have worked so far. And next we are planning to work on a pair metric in the academic open area. Anyone have questions or comments for the value working group? Nicely done. It's nice to see those released. I wasn't at the last meeting, so I didn't know that. Great. So I would like to uh, apologize for not moving that stuff to the website quite yet. We're in a we're in a bit of a a freeze on the website right now because we're we're doing the, the migration. So. Uh, those new metrics probably, they are in review on in the repositories, however, they have not gone live to the website yet. Kevin, do you have a date that um, will everything will be switched over to the new site? That's really exciting. Uh, we're, we're actually past our date. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, we probably need to set a new one. We, we ran into, uh, we ran into some problems with some of the, uh, uh, the code that the Linux foundation had, uh, created, uh, on the website. So, uh, yeah. however, I think we, we have that issue resolved. So, uh, we're going to be, we should be moving forward a lot faster now. So my hope would be within the next week, we can have the, the new website, uh, ready to go. Yeah, we've, we've overcome a number of little technical obstacles, mostly associated with it being one of many, many WordPress sites in an organization. Yeah. And uh, thanks to Matt Snell for his help on our latest little point of stuckness. Appreciate it. Yes, definitely. Point of stuckness. I like that. We're going to use that again. Copyright <laughs> chaos community. We'll make billions. We're going to make billions. 
we hold calendars about it, electronic ones, of course. The point of point of stuckness metric. Yes. <laughs> Dear, don't tempt me. Does that have anything to do with the situativeness metric? <laughs> yes, I'm sure they're related. <laughs> okay. Um, also work on the website migration. Thank you guys for doing that. It's just amazing. It's going to be so much better when we can have a little more control over stuff. So thank you for all your work on that 100%. And thank you, Vinod, for the update on, on the value working group. I'm going to move forward unless there's any objections. Going on. All right, the next one is risk. Uh, um, talking about risk, uh, I post a, put a link in the notes that uh, relates to our minimum viable metric work. This is the list of metrics that we're targeting for uh, immediate development. We have reviewed sort of a, a general over, we have done a general overview of all of the challenges that face understanding dependencies in open source software. Uh, I don't think anybody solved that problem. I think it's fair to say. And that's what our OSCO, OSPOCON panel is, is a group of people, uh, most of whom have been active in the risk working group who represent very different perspectives, uh, different types of companies, um, different types of projects, safety critical, not safety critical. So <clears throat> trying to do a couple of things that sort of shape the larger understanding of, of dependencies and risk. Questions, comments for that group? When do you hear back from OSPOCON, do you know? I don't know, probably the same time we hear back from OSSNA and I kind of would guess that they'll either do it all at once or do it in stages. Those are the two options. <laughs> and I, think I, I heard July 13th, they were, okay. that's what I think is in my brain, but. All right. I'm not, I'm, I'm not entirely persuaded that this is gonna be in person, but we'll see. Okay, let's move on to evolution. Um, new metrics to or inactive development. Sean, you wanna talk about that one? I can. I was not at the last evolution meeting because of my personal schedule. Um, but in that last meeting, we did uh, put a new metric under review almost. And I, I the almost is uh, awaiting the website. Is that right? No, no. The That's awaiting an action item for me to put the pull request in for it. Oh, OK. OK. So yeah, almost. Um, about individual and organizational contribution credit. Big shout out to the Drupal community for contributing uh, many of the ideas that underlie this metric and participating in a lot of discussions related to its development. We're also, I uh, have a couple of metrics in active development that are uh, displayed on the spreadsheet. And I imagine we will be using our meetings uh, in the coming weeks to get those finished. Makes sense. Okay, um, moving ahead, unless someone has questions. Or comments, feedback, anything? Nicely done. I hate to keep powering through and not really giving anyone a chance to jump in. So just yeah, raise do the raise hand emoji or just do jump a right in. Good job. That way I don't have to chime in at the end of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well let's move on to the common working group. Um, Don, do you want to say a little bit about that? Yeah, so we reworked our focus areas. We decided that the who, what where um, was confusing and not particularly helpful. So we spent a bunch of time in the last meeting reworking those. So the, the actual focus area hasn't changed. We've just changed the name and the definition to make it a, hopefully a lot more clear for people. And then we have a whole bunch of work in progress metrics on a bunch of stuff on time waiting for submitter action, bots, clones, um, I linked to the agenda notes. You can see what metrics we're working on. So if any of those are interesting to you, come and join us. We have a meeting on Thursday. Any questions? Good job. Still gonna say it. Well done. <laughs> so concise. All right. 
Um, okay, that was awesome. That was all of our working groups. I think we got everyone. Uh, so we'll move along to the next item on the list, which is we have a new student who was on the call, but I see that he dropped off, but I see Venus here. So um, we want to welcome Savagen, who is our new open source promotion plan 2021 um, student who is going to be working on the Grimoire Lab tutorial. Venu is his mentor and he'll be with us for about three months. So um, that is the, um, I think someone was calling it like the Google Summer of Code in China. So we're very, very happy to have him part of, uh, of the community and hopefully he'll watch this later and, and uh, know that we are, we are thinking of him and we welcome him to the community. Venu, is there anything you want to add to that? We can Thanks, Elizabeth, oh, for the intro. Uh, I think there's one more student, I guess, along with Sevgin. There's another student. I think so because I have seen the results and I see that you know there are there were two students uh, selected. So. Do we know the other student yet? Um, I don't know. Maybe I think it's uh, related to Shaya project, Shaya's project. So I think she knows better details. Awesome. We will follow up with Shoya then. And I see Sevajin is on the call now. Do you want to introduce yourself to the community? Sure. Um, I'll introduce myself. Uh, yep. Yeah. So hi, everyone. Hi. hi. So yeah, my name is Sevajin. Um, I got selected for uh, the Summer uh, OSPP for uh, this year to work on the Grimoire Lab tutorial. So um, it's already been one week. Uh, it's going to be one week tomorrow, exactly. So uh, I've had a meeting with my mentor and we've talked about what to do. So uh, this past week has been about um, revamping the, uh, actually remaking uh, the sorting hat uh, tutorial since it, it has been um, revamped, there's a new interface for it. So I was uh, spending this week documenting everything about um, how to, to create profiles, how to add uh, organizations and like every little bit of detail I can get from, from the new interface. So, yep, that's what I've been doing this week. And yep, I'm actually very happy to be, to have been being selected for this project. Uh, I'm actually finally a student uh, from Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pidam. And uh, I'm from Mauritius, which is a very small island in the Indian Ocean. If you look at it in the map, you won't even see it. So, yeah. What's the name of That's the all about myself. What's the name of the island? Can you put it in chat? The name of yeah. the island? Yeah, I'll put it. I'll have you know that my um, we have this big like mouse cover thing on our desk, and I can see Mauritius. It's actually on there, and it's it's like a little map. It's like this big, the size of the desk. Oh. It's actually on there. Ah, usually when I look at it in Google Maps, I have to zoom into to actually see it. So I was like. <laughs> We're very, very glad that you are here. So thank you for being here. And thank you for participating in the meeting, even though I'm sure the time is not <clears throat> super <clears throat> convenient for you. So <laughs> thank you for being here. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. All right. Um, OK, so let's go ahead and move on. Uh, so we do have a few other things to talk about. Um, so I'll put in here Slack channel trial is expiring. So what do we want to do about that? This is just housekeeping. I noticed it had like four days left. I wasn't sure how to bring it up. Or who the, to bring it up to? So, the, the well, the the way to the way the basically the difference is we don't get the forever archive, and there's a few other features. But I think the I think if I think the thing to consider if we want to buy a subscription is uh, it's based on the number of active users. Uh, you can we can get an academic discount. I've done it for two other Slack channels, and it's pretty substantial discount um and what you, you just basically could just keep more than ten thousand messages which we may find useful that would be the one justification for actually purchasing a subscription 
Do you have any idea, like, approximately how much it would be a month? I am. Um, I when I do have like uh, sixty students in a class, I pay for one, and during the class, it runs me about fifty bucks a month. Okay. For for sixty people. And that would so, be probably about the same for this. And yeah, you have to apply for the academic discount, but if you do it using your UNO email or my email or some other EDU email, um, I've never been denied. So it'd be like six hundred a year. Yeah, that's yeah, and I at the most because again, it's act it's going to be based on active users, and if only five or if only thirty people use it in a month, we'll be charged for thirty people. Okay. And if 200 people use it in a month, then it'll be more. But I don't think we have any problems quite like that. This is a, it's a weird billing thing. Yeah. Like we can't, the community bridge or LFX, the, you know, how the money we have in that, like we can't yeah. waste. And if we did that, it probably couldn't be academic. Right. And if it's variable, like, if you or I did it, we could like, like if you did it, we could cut you a check for like $600. But like you're, what you're saying is that may or may not be the amount. <laughs> I mean, I think I don't, I, I mean, pra as a practical matter, it doesn't seem, to, I mean, I've never done it with a wide open community like chaos, but um, <clears throat> I'm certain, I, I mean, if we want it, if go ahead, Ray. Oh, sorry. No, go, go ahead. I'll let you go ahead and finish, uh, please. I, I was, yeah, I was just going to say I'm, I'm happy to deal with it because I already submit expenses for my other Slack channels. So, I mean, my only two cents is, I mean, even with the like a, a big discount, I, I usually don't think it's worth it. Like having more than 10,000 messages, like, you know, you know, the community I belong to, we have, I mean, I don't total of like 3000 plus people on slack mm -hmm. but 10,000 messages you have like three four months worth of messages that you can you can search back and uh you know if it's that important just you know document it somewhere like in the handbook right i mean i think people just use slack as a i mean it wasn't it, it, it's meant to be a real-time conversation tool it's not a knowledge-based tool like if it's something that needs to be documented just document it i don't think it's worth even if it's like two dollars per users per month, I don't think it's worth it. It's not what the Slack was designed for, and you know, I, it sounds like there are more complications too with billing. So, just having a free version, you know, if we lose messages up to ten thousand messages, I think it's fine. And to be honest, the chances of you finding that message that you were looking for <laughs> in the Slack archives, yeah, good luck. I mean, that's we, a whole yeah. other. That's yeah. a whole another story. Search is horrendous. But. So yeah, maybe we just let it roll off then. And it just happens automatically. I'm like, how we have this vision that like, at the end of four days. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, so like what they'll do, like even the community that I, I mean, the cube community I, I'm managing right now. So they'll try to like string you in with oh, we're going to give you enterprise edition for, for, for free for three months, right? Try to rope you in, but I let it slip. And then nothing happened except that I lost messages older than 10,000 messages. That's yeah. fine. That's yeah. the only difference. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sounds like the decision has been made <laughs> to has. just stay on the free version. And better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so the next thing really quick is, uh, and this will be a good segue into uh, the planning part, is we wanted to give a quick update on ChaosCon. It is happening, in case you missed it, September 30th, 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Uh, it's in Seattle as part of the Open Source Summit, if you missed that. Um, we are going to record the talks, and we're also going to have a live stream available, is our, is our goal, anyway, for virtual attendees, because we know... Um, a lot of you won't be able to attend in person. Um, you know, I guess there's still a chance that it may not even happen in person at all. So uh, yeah, the CFP is open as is the uh, sponsorship opportunities. And um, yesterday I tweeted that the registration was open. So my bad, it isn't, <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, uh, registration is open for the Open Source Summit 
but the chaos con piece of that is not yet open. So that is coming, coming soon. Uh, we just have to answer some questions from the LF, which we're going to do in this meeting. So hopefully it'll be open uh, sooner than later. Um, coming soon to the internet near you. Right. <laughs> so my bad, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> And we did want to uh, let you know that Emma Irwin from Microsoft is going to be our keynote um, in the morning. So super excited about that. She's amazing. She's been part of the chaos community from uh, very early on, and she's just a great person, great human being all around. So she has a lot of great insight to share. Yeah. Um, ChaosCon team, what else should we pass along? What else did we miss? I think, I think we have one room. I think. What's that done? Oh, I said the CFP is open, if you didn't mention that. Uh, Elizabeth, you mentioned who is the giving the keynotes. I missed the name, please. Uh, Emma Irwin. Oh, OK. And uh, I, I think everyone knows, or maybe not, that we're down to one room. We had, in the, in the past, when it's been face-to-face-ish, -face we've had two rooms, but we have one room to work with. So we will be crammed in there together. Oh. Yeah. One track. <laughs> Georg, Georg's face is amazing. Yeah. Okay. It's not that bad. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, Matt has dropped a link to the CFP. Um, is that the form that they can fill out? OK, perfect. Also, we're open for sponsorship. The, the prospectus is online as well. So if you work at a company or know someone at a company that does those things, um, feel free to pass that along because it's a very good cause. Um, so, yeah. All right, Any anything else? Um, it looks like Sophia had one other quick thing about the data ethics blog. And we talked about this last week. Um, do you want to just briefly talk about that, Sophia? Yeah, sure. Um, given that we didn't really make space for it in this meeting, I just wanted to follow up because I mentioned I would bring something to this meeting. Um, we were discussing possibly putting together some sort of blog or statement that would help to start the conversation around ethical data handling in and around metrics collection in open source communities. And I wanted to share a presentation that I wasn't really a presentation, it was a discussion. If you're familiar with the MOSFEST formats, uh, it was a discussion group that I led with Daniel, also in chaos, and Maria Cruz from Google. Um, and I just wanted to share some of the material that we put together. Um, this is a way to just like, we have started thinking about this topic. I wanted to make it available to members from Chaos worked on this. So I figured it would make sense to share it with this group. Um, and when we're ready to move that forward, I'm happy to be part of it. Um, and just help forward the thinking. I'm assuming we'll probably do that somewhat as a collective group, but just wanted to share it now. We don't have to spend time on it. Um, but I'm happy to talk about it if you want to. Okay, so that would be awesome. Um, I think that a lot of people would be interested in that information. Um, and then we will add this to next week where we can actually have a, a conversation and to move that forward. Because I know that that's something that's important to a lot of people, to everyone in this group, um, is to get that data ethics statement kind of nailed down. Uh, do you want to put a link to it here? Uh, or how do you want to do that? Or in Slack or something? Or Yeah, sure. I put it, I can put it in the notes. Realize I linked to it in the action item for me, but not in the today's notes. So I just added that. So then if, if people have time and would um, be willing to take a look at that prior to next meeting so that we can talk about that, um, that would be great. Okay, anything else before we dismiss the, the bigger group? Going once, going twice. All right, so everyone who is not on the Chaos Con Planning Committee, you are free to go. We are very happy that you are here. Thank you so much for being here. Um, everybody else who's helping with Chaos Con Planning, please stick around and we will finish some stuff up. Sean, you can stop recording too. Oh yeah, that's probably a really good idea since we don't want any of our secret deliberations <laughs> recorded.